Ezekiel chapter 35. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Mount Seir, Edom, again, and prophesy against it. And say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, O Mount Seir, I am against thee. I will stretch out my hand against thee. Look what God did to Egypt. And I will make thee most desolate. Deuteronomy 2, 1 through 9, I got to know. I will lay thy cities waste, and thou shalt be desolate, and thou shalt know that I am the Lord. We saw in the last chapter, in verse 27, a good way of knowing the Lord. But after you mean you've been destroyed, after God has kicked your butt, that's not the way to know the Lord. Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred and has shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity. Now when we get to um, Obadiah, we're going to get that in more detail. Babylon has not completely sacked Jerusalem yet. And what's happening is when Nebuchadnezzar comes, the three times he will come, Israel is running. Normal. You'd flee. If somebody came into Daytona Beach today, armies and all that, we'd flee. I'm not going to stay. I'm going to go somewhere where it's safe. And what's happening is some of them are running towards Esau, his land of Edom. And we're told here that Esau is killing them. Esau is taking them and bring they're taking them captive and bringing them to the Babylonian army. Esau is doing whatever they can to stop Israel. Esau is a type of antichrist. And God said, "I'm going to make you desolate. I'm going to destroy you." This is Genesis 12 again. I will curse you that curse my people. Now let's say by chance I don't want it, but let's say if I were to be president, premier, prime minister, king, or whatever nation, whatever they call their world leader in that nation. If I want to know what's one thing or two things that God wants me to do to be leader of this country. I want to do what God wants me to do, and I want to do right. Well, I don't know how important of the top ten list, but I know it'll probably be up there in the top ten. You better protect that Jew with all your revenue, all your might, all that you have, and stand for that Jew through thick or through thin and protect him. And you're going to have a hard time because one of the things you would have to do as a world leader is get uh, countries out there to send missionaries, to get the gospel out, to preach to the lost people of the world about the Lord Jesus Christ. That's going to be one of the things you will have to do as a world leader. You know what Paul says about those Jews today? They are an enemy of the cross. They are enemies of the gospel. And God has set them aside corporately for that very fact for the Gentiles to come in. And when you want to do right with God, the Bible tells you his people are going to fight against you. And you still got to go by Genesis 12. You got to bless them, you got to protect them, and you got to do right with them. And all they that live godly in Christ Jesus is going to suffer persecution. They're going to be the hardest people. They're going to give you the hardest time to run your country by God. And what we've learned through Ezekiel and Jeremiah and Obadiah, and if you keep on studying all these books in the Bible, you realize any nation that messes with, with Israel, God is going to destroy you. Where is Babylon today? It's gone. Where's Edom? It's gone. Where are all those people that, that went against Israel? They're gone. 
And do you realize that at the end of the at the end of the tribulation period, the only nations that get to go in the millennium, Gentile nations, the tribulation period is not for the Gentiles. It's done. Gentiles are done. The only way a Gentile can get into the millennium is by his conduct to the Jew, Matthew 25. How do you not get passage into the millennium from the tribulation period? You treat that you curse that Jew and God will curse you into the into hell. It's that simple. And when you read what Jesus said in Matthew 25, you know what's very interesting? Those people didn't even know what they were doing. He said, and I'm, I'm just quoting Perbain, he said, you visited me in jail, you took care of me when I was sick, you, you uh, gave me food. And, and they're like, when did we do that? How did we do that? And he says, you've done it unto my brethren. Now here are people rewarded for doing good to the Jews. They didn't even know what they were doing. Here are people who do not help the Jews, not knowing what they're doing, and they're cursed. What more is when you know what you're doing? Now, let's say if I was president of the United States, and we've got a problem situation with gasoline. We've got one complete nation that has all the gasoline we need, and we've got a little, little nation called Israel. This nation that has the gasoline wants to, wants to get rid of Israel off the map. They want to get rid of them. They want to destroy them, and they want us to help them or they're going to limit our resources of gasoline if we don't help destroy Israel. I would get in the Rose Garden. I would call all the news reporters. I would call for a press conference with the citizens of the United States of America and say, as of this day, we are limited like in the 70s of, of gasoline. And we're going to send our army, our navy, our marines, our air force, and our Coast Guard to the little nation of Israel, and anybody attacks Israel, we're going to bomb the hell out of them. We're going to turn their land into a glass ice skating rink. They mess with Israel, they're going to mess with us, and you can take your gasoline and you can stick it in your, in your butt when you go to hell and burn on those flames. We'll make electric cars so people can have jobs. If I was a leader of this country or any country that came to Israel, I'd say, we're going to stand by you. We're going to put bases for a defense in your country. Anybody launches a missile here, they're going to have 45,000 missiles. I'll use every single submarine that we've got with 25 missiles in those tubes. And boom. To that one nation that attacks them. You see, our country has already started going against Israel because of fuel, or gasoline, because you know, we want to make friends with those people. No. You know, the perfect storm, you read about what they were doing with, with Israel. Go ask Germany how they're doing with Israel. Go. Have you seen England? Have you seen the, the country where our King James Bible came from? Have you seen even pictures of walking down the street? Teenagers look like porcupines in different colors. Even their own queen, the queen of England, has no power and no authority, and she can knight a sodomite. I like that, knight a sodomite. Have you seen the music that's come out of that country? Why? Israel, you can have the land. Oh, really? Cool. Belfort Decoration. Well, we got to give, give some of it to Jordan. After that, they came up with a perverted Bible, and they haven't been a nation since. You know that nation sent. You know if you don't think it's going to happen to America, that nation said that uh, what was it the sun never set on the British Empire. You know why? That nation sent missionaries all over the known world. I don't mean Christopher Columbus and the Roman Catholic Church. I mean they sent Bibles and they sent missionaries in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. They're not going to tell you that in school. You know what America d does at one time? We send out missionaries. We send them out all over the world. And you know what? We're following the footsteps of, of England. One day we're going to be the second. We've already got how many perverted how many perverted Bibles are made and published in this country? 
You know your Jehovah Witnesses? You know your Mormons? Your Seventh-day Adventists? You know they're all fruits of America? They're not fruits of England and Europe or Asia. Those are fruits of America. And the final straw would be, I would believe, I, I believe we're at the final straws right now, but the final straw would be you keep, if you want to watch something in the news, you watch the conflict every time Israel comes into our thing, you better pray for our government. Because in that moment when this government says there's something more important than the Jews, then that's it. Do you know who's running this country? Jews. You know what Adolf Hitler did with the Jews? He blamed them for the false economy. And you know what the Bible says? Paul says that they're an enemy of the gospel. You know who probably took the Bibles out of school? If, if I go by the Bible, and I, I can't prove this, so throw it in the garbage can if I'm wrong, probably a Jew. We just learned today, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, uh, I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. I think of that one. And rocking around the, 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 the Christmas tree was all sung or, or written by a Jew. I know a couple Jews, and one Jew hated the fact is that he had a shutdown on our celebration of Christmas, and they didn't do anything for Hanukkah. Now, I'm not making fun of Jews. I'm just saying what Paul said. They're an enemy for the gospel. Any opposition to the Bible and Jesus Christ would probably come from a Jew. Have you not read the book of Acts? And Paul tells us to pray for the peace in Israel. He's told us to pray for the Jews. I'd love to, get, I'd love to have one day before I die or after, I would love to be able to lead a Jew to the Lord Jesus Christ. Your nation of success, any nation you are, white, black, purple, green, brown, yellow, aliens, Mars, any successful nation will be based upon your conduct to God's people, the Jews. Next would probably be your conduct towards the Christians. Because they're God's people too. And that's going bye-bye in America. Edom or Esau was preventing the Jews from running from Babylon in an army military attack. And they were killing them. And that in that time that their iniquity had an end. Therefore, as I live, God, oathen by himself, picture God walk in a courtroom and they give him his Bible. He puts his right hand, the Lord Jesus Christ, up, puts it up in the air and puts his le left hand on the, on the Bible and says, Do you swear to know the whole truth is not the bunch of truth? So help me me. Say it to the Lord God. It says, I think it's Hebrew. It says God couldn't swear by any other but his name. A name that's given above all names whereby you must be born, born again. You must be saved. Hebrews 4.12. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord God, I will prepare thee unto blood. Why? Because they shed their blood. And blood shall pursue thee. Murderers are going to go after thee. Which, uh, wait, Sith. That's a funny word, isn't it? Sith. That means sent in latter times. Uh, you go through it, say it. You would think to say it, so no, that's one of those words that catch you in the Bible. You're really reading every word. Thou hast not hated blood. Even blood shall pursue thee. Esau is still mad at Israel or mad at Jacob for stealing the blessing. All the, you know, that temple that Solomon built should have been in Mount Seir. 
Remember, Esau came in for a mess of beans, sold the birthright to, to uh, Jacob. And Jacob got it. He did subtility, but he got it through his father Isaac. All these promises, all these blessings of first and second kings and first and second Sam, all the prophets that come that we've been reading about, Ezekiel, Elijah, Elisha, Samuel, David, should have been Edomites. You know, wouldn't you think let's take let's say, you know, you got a brother or a sister. It's when only you two of the family and you got this family business or family farm. And because something you did that made dad angry with you because of your brother or sister, it was their fault. You lost your entire inheritance and everything while your brother or sister gained it all. And it gets successful and gets popular. And you see their products in the grocery store. You see their products in, and you just look at that. Wouldn't that just get you angry? I could have had that. That should have been mine. Now we get into vengeance. Now we get into envy. Listen, my friend. Let me tell you. I know we're going off the record here, but we're studying. You better realize as a parent, your envy, your anger, your revenge. Didn't it say that Esau wanted to kill Jacob? That Jacob had to flee from his brother Esau. And yeah, they got the battle and they, and they got together and they kissed and all that. But the children are still carrying that grudge. They're still carrying that vengeance into 588 BC. Didn't Abraham one day say, Pharaoh, she's my she's my sister. Abimelech? She's my sister. Didn't Abraham say that? Then how come long after that happened, how come Isaac went into, went into I forget the land was, how come he said, that's my sister? Where did he learn that? And he was nowhere around. Matter of fact, it happened to his mother before he was born. Wasn't it quite weird for um, Reuben to go sleep with his father's handmaid? Where did he get that from? Go back to great-great-grandpa and Hagar. And there's one thing I know as a parent and as a proven fact. Your children will do what you do that is a sin more than they will do right. I swear... Let's just say I did not have a good childhood growing up when it comes to alcohol. I've got some bad memories and dreams. And I vowed to my mother one day and said, I'll never drink that stuff. And I'm not even going to tell you about that story. But I'm gonna... Well, let's say I had a great object lesson when it came to drinking. At um, what was I, 17 years old, I'm sitting in a police station, handcuffed, speaking to the police about what? DUI. You know? Parents, you got to realize you're teaching your children something. That smoking will carry on to the children. That language will carry on to the children. That impatience will carry. And listen, they're watching you and they're learning. I don't, don't want to go back to find out how long. But this is a lot of years. Esau has been dead many years. Jacob has been dead many years. But guess what? It's still going. It's the Hatfields and McCormick's. McCoy. This... Now, thus will I make Mount Seir most desolate, and cut off from it him that passeth out, and him that returneth. 
You know, people got to go back to Egypt when now it was all destroyed. Egypt is still a nation. Edom is not. I will fill his mountains with his slain men. Egypt will be totally gone one day. Germany will be totally gone one day. England will be totally gone one day. I think there's only one nation that has never been against that Jew. I think it's the Netherlands or Holland. In thy hills and in thy valleys and in all thy rivers shall they fall that are slain with the sword. And we're going to read about this when we get to, if we get to Obadiah, Lord willing. It's only one chapter. I will make thee perpetual desolations, and thy city shall not return. When you mess with Israel, God takes it personally. You shall know that I am the Lord. I believe Adolf Hitler is probably burning the lowest hell. You know, I'm not trying, I'm not making jokes or anything. I'm not trying to make light. It'd be kind of, wouldn't it be kind of harsh for Adolf Hitler to be burning the lowest hill for defying God's people and having the people that he killed there in hell with him? What could be the worst thing for Adolf Hitler? Having a bunch of Jews being around him. And he can't do nothing about it. Don't they know who it, who people are? Didn't the rich man call out to Abraham? He knew who Abraham was. He remembered he had family. So if he remembered he had family on earth, this thing about off Hitler looking at those faces that he killed and murdered. Just because they're God's people didn't mean they went to heaven because they got to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Because thou hast said, these two nations and these two countries shall be mine, Israel and Judah. They wanted the land. Isn't that what's not going on in the Middle East today? Is that not what they're saying? The Catholics want the land. The Islam wants the land. The, the uh, Palestine, whatever they call themselves, PLO today, they want the land. The Jordanians want the land. The Arabians want the land. America would love to have the land. Everybody wants that land. Things haven't changed. That's your newspaper today. United Nuts want that land. And we will possess it. We will take it. God's like, yeah, right. Sure. You're not even going to be able to hold on to your land. Can you imagine Esau having a, having a national anthem song? This is my land. This is your land. God said, yeah, right. I'll show you whose land it is. Therefore, as I live again, God, oathen by himself, saith the Lord God, I will even do according to thine anger. Be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, that he shall also reap. Adolf Hitler got off very lightly by his suicide. God says, you were angry with them? Let me be angry with you. And according to thine envy, that is what the Pharisees and the Sadducees turned Jesus Christ over, according to Pontius Pilate, a government Roman official. You know what envy, can, you know what envy and anger can do for you? It can get you in very bad trouble with God. Now the Bible says be angry. Get angry that, that Sodomites are taking over. Get angry that people are rewriting the Bible. Get angry that there are people come knocking on doors with a perverted gar garbage. But don't sin. And according to thy envy which thou hast used out of thy Hatred against them, the Jews. They use their envy.
and I will make myself known among them when I have judged thee. That is just a saying, and then you shall know I am the Lord, but God said, you're going to know me. You're going to know me. You're not going to know me as the Lord. You're just going to know me. I'll get that one thing straight. I am the God of Abraham. I am the God of Isaac. And I am the God of Jacob. Don't you think that would make Edom quiver and angry? I believe people, and like I said, this is, I believe. When I say I believe, you don't have to believe. I believe there are going to be people at the great white throne judgment going to be angry with God as they go into hell. I believe that. I believe some people bow their knees and say, Jesus Christ is God of all. I believe they're going to be angry. Not all. I believe some. And thou shalt know that I am the Lord, and that I have heard all, all thy blasphemies, which thou hast spoken against the mountains of Israel. So you better to watch out. You better not, pal. I'm telling you why Jesus Christ is coming. See, you give it a nice little puffy little guy, nice guy. You know, he, he gives you all kinds of presents. Give to God. And if you're bad, he gives you a lump of coal. What do you do with coal? You burn it. Have you ever blasphemed? Have you ever said something that no one else heard that you shouldn't have said? You ever get upset with your, and listen, I'm talking about myself. You ever get upset your boss tells you, and underneath the breath, God says, I heard. Oh, I heard that story. Your boss don't hear you complain. I hear you complaining. He's making a list and checking it twice. Recording that, what every light I stand. God hears everything. I believe also God's writing a book with your name on the top. Right here on the top of this Bible says Ezekiel. I believe there's a book with my name. That would be funny. It would be the chapters would be uh December eighteenth. The verse markers would be 7.53 p.m., 7.55 p.m., 8.01 p.m. Wouldn't that be interesting? But let's get one thing straight by the, today's lesson. Let's bring it up to date today. God is recording. God hears everything you say. Another thing with Esau, Edom. God has nothing good to record about them. Not one thing good. There is no captivity to Edomite. There is no bringing them back to the Edomite. There is no restoration to Edomite. They are bung, gun, done. I have heard the blasphemy which thou hast spoken against the mountains of Israel. They are, they are, des they are laid desolate. They are, given, yeah, they are given us to consume. This is when Babylon comes. You know what they're saying? That land, that nation, that, that, that place of Israel is gone, it's done. That's exactly what the Middle East is saying today. That's exactly what the United Nuts are saying today. And God's, God told you in the King James Bible in 2015, Ezekiel 15, verse 12, He said, I hear you saying that. I've seen your maps in the schoolroom where the map doesn't even have Israel on it. I'm going to tell you right now, this thing gets to the Middle East, any country in the Islam, any nation in Roman Catholic, and anything in the United Nations, let me tell you, your maps are standing before God and being recorded. You better repent of your sins. Take away my gasoline. I need to walk. Thus, with your mouth, he have boasted against me. God takes what you do to that Jew very personal. 
and have multiplied your words against me. I have heard them. You know, there's some things my parents to this day don't know what I did or said. God knows. There's things I've done my wife has not seen me done. It's not around me all the time. God is with me all the time. See, you want to know how not to sin? I'll tell you two ways how not to sin. Realize that God's with you all the time. And at any moment, God could call us all home right now. That'll get you out of sin. When we sin is when we forget God. We really love God and really want to do right with God. We'd be thinking about him all the second. Thus saith the Lord God, when the whole earth rejoices. 25, 12. Obadiah 10. When the whole earth rejoices, I will make thee desolate. The only thing I can think the whole time the whole earth rejoices in the millennium. I got the wrong. Uh, Ezekiel 35 12. 36, 4 to 7, and Obadiah 12 and 15. As thou didst rejoice at the inheritance of the, of the house of Israel, Ezekiel 25, 12, Obadiah 10, because it was desolate. See, when Babylon came and sacked Jerusalem, Esau had a party. He fired his guns or whatever they had up in the air. Esau rejoiced at the fall of Jerusalem. So will I do unto thee. Thou shalt be desolate, O Mount Seir, and all Indumia, even all of it. And they shall know that I am the Lord. Today's lesson is to, and you send this off, I don't care where they put my neck on the string or anything, you send this off to any political figure of any government in this world, you better keep your hands off Israel and you better protect it. No matter what he does to you. And if he gets you in trouble, he starts giving you a bad time, you call to our Father God in heaven, Jehovah, and say, God, you see what that guy's doing? You see what I'm trying to do to that guy because you tell me? You let God take care of it. You know? I will curse them that curse you, and I will bless them that will bless you. This nation is so important, the Lord Jesus Christ came out of it. So a failure of a nation is a nation, when you pick up your newspaper and read, they've gone against God's people.